Phil Ebener with videoschoolonline.com with another Premiere Pro tutorial. This one is another transition tutorial, creating the zoom blur transition effect right within Premiere Pro. Let's head behind the computer and I'll show you how to do it. So I'm actually going to show you two different versions of this sort of smooth zoom blur effect. One is this first one that you just saw where it's this one coming up where you kind of zoom in and out really quick. And then the next one is the one where you zoom in and it looks like you're kind of zooming in to both shots. This one coming up right there and there. Awesome. So a big shout out to a couple other YouTubers who have showed these in the past. Justin Nodisho uh, is a great YouTuber who has some killer Premiere Pro tutorials. So let's go through both of them. One, you can see the zoom in, zoom out only needs one adjustment layer, which is awesome because you can apply this to any transition, any hard cut between two clips. The next one is two adjustment layers, which isn't too bad, but it is a little bit more work. Awesome. So let's get started. So you have two clips, just a hard cut between them, and we're going to create a new adjustment layer. Click the new item button, go to adjustment layer, it's already going to be the size of your video settings, so make sure that it matches. And then just lay this down on top of your clip. Not on your clip, on top of your clip. So here I'm going to go in my cut and I'm going to shift left to make sure that it's five frames. Now your keyboard shortcuts might be set up differently, so you can just use the keyboard to go five frames over and that's typically how long I like to make this transition. If you wanna make it longer or shorter, go ahead and feel free to do that. So with the zoom, all you have to do is use the transform effect. So if you go to effects, go to transform, if I can spell, under distort, drop this onto the adjustment layer, okay? So now what you need to do is set a few keyframes. So first, really you can put your time indicator wherever you want, but I'm just gonna put it at the cut for now. Under transform in my effects controls bin, I'm going to set a scale keyframe by hitting that stopwatch next to scale. I'm gonna move that to the start. I'm going to create another keyframe here by clicking add remove keyframe at 100 and dragging that all the way to the right. So this is saying to Premiere Pro that at this point, I want the scale to be 100 and at this point, I want it to be 100 as well. In the middle though, we want it to zoom in or out. So I'm gonna go to this cut right here on, on my timeline, and here I'm going to zoom in. You can change this to, depending on how much zoom you want it to be, but around 200 looks pretty good to me. So here, if I play through this, you have this quick and easy zoom in, zoom out. Now to make it look a little bit more natural with some blur, we can use the same effect, just go down and uncheck use composition shutter angle. This is the basically shutter speed of your clip. And if we change the shutter angle down here to 360, watch what happens. We're gonna get some blur, which is pretty cool. And so 360 is the max here. And so that's what I like. I think that blur looks pretty natural and pretty good. But if you want it to be even more blurry, what you could do, I'll show you really quickly, is go down here let me just play this for you a couple times so you can see what's actually going on. You can see our beautiful work. Wow, that's gonna give someone seizures. Okay, so if we play a little bit longer, so you can see what's happening. And I am looping that with this loop button right there if you're interested. So if we add like a directional blur or a Gaussian blur to this adjustment layer, and then we set a couple keyframes for that in our effects controls. So let's set keyframes for blur length. And we put that at the beginning. Another one, set a keyframe, put that at the end. And in the middle, we're going to set it to like 50, for example. Wow, that's a lot. But let's change our direction to 90. And I think that looks a little bit more natural. Maybe 25 is enough. So playing through this again, you get a little bit more blur. Now with all of these keyframes, what I wanna do is select all of them just by clicking or shift clicking and dragging over them, right clicking and choosing Bezier. That adds a little bit of pop to the speed of this animation. And I think that looks pretty darn cool. Now, one thing I do wanna quickly mention a cool tip is to mark a, an individual clip, just press M on your keyboard or go up to markers and then add marker. And the reason why I did that 
at where this cut is, is so that if I want to add this adjustment layer transition to another transition, I can just simply copy and paste it. Or what I did there was hold the option key and drag it over and then just make sure that that marker that we now see is right on the cut. And so that's how you know it's going to be the perfect sort of, let's play both of these, the perfect sort of timing for that transition. Awesome, so that's pretty cool. Now let's move on to our next sort of zoom in complete transition. Remember what that looked like? Boom, boom. So you can see as I go through here, I'm gonna just toggle through, it's zooming in. And then the next clip is kind of zooming in too. And we're kind of creating a fake zoom in because this clip is already 100% scaled. And I'll kind of explain that and show you how that works in a second. So first, let's take this adjustment layer, put it on top over here again. And I actually noticed now that we have that marker on that adjustment layer. So you can leave that on there if you want. You can create a new adjustment layer so that you don't have a marker on there. And so that's pretty good. And then we're going to add another adjustment for now and just put it right there. And I'm going to just clip it at the end. So you have one on track three, one on track two, and the track two adjustment layer is only going to apply to the second part of the clip. Okay, so first what we need to do is set up the second shot so that it can be zoomed in. And the way that you do this is really kind of interesting actually. We're going to use a stylized effect called, called replicate. So if you drop that onto the adjustment layer and then go up to effects controls and change the count to three, you'll notice that it creates this grid of nine videos. What we basically wanna do is make it so that the edge of this middle image is sort of mirrored. And so that when we zoom in, I'm just gonna show you, actually I can't do it there, but if we zoom in, nope, not there either. Where are we gonna zoom in? We have to apply the transform property, which we're going to use again, transform. We're gonna put this on the top adjustment layer. And so if we zoom in, and I'm just gonna fake this, but if we zoom in like that, it's not gonna look like it's a grid, but because it goes so quickly, it's gonna look like it's one shot with extended edges being zoomed in. And so that's basically how we're gonna animate it with the transform. But we need to mirror these edges. And the way we do that is with the mirror effect. <laughs> so there's a mirror effect and we're gonna apply this four times just so you're warned. And so when I apply this, well, nothing really happened. But what happens if I adjust the reflection angle? Whoa, what's happening? So if we adjust this reflection angle to 90 and then we drop down the Y position of the reflection center, you can kind of see what I'm doing. I'm just trying to get it so those edges meet right there. I'm also going to apply it again. And let's see, we are going to go negative 90 and then move it up. So now we have the top and bottom of that middle video kind of reflected. Let's apply it again. This one I always forget what I have to do. I'm just going to drag the X property to the left it meets so now this right side is looking good let's drag one more mirror up there this one i believe i have to reflect to 90 no nope, 180 180 is right and then drag all the way to the left so now and there's probably different ways to do that to get this sort of same setup with different reflections and angles but that's how i did it so I had one at 90, one at negative 90, one at zero, one at 180, and then just adjusted the position. So now if I go to my other adjustment layer and we do a scale animation, well, let me just show you what's happening. We can kind of quickly zoom in right there and it's gonna look pretty darn good. Awesome, so now I'm going to go and set some keyframes. So for the scale, I'm gonna set a keyframe at 100 and put that at the very beginning. And now if I go to the grid or over this adjustment layer on my timeline, if I scale up, I'm gonna go all the way up to 300 because if we, not 30, 300. So if we go up all the way to 300 and then you can see that it automatically cuts and it's fine after these adjustment layers aren't being applied to the rest of this clip. And so a 300 scale 
zooms in that mirrored grid all the way so it's like one clip now. Awesome, so that's our sort of, let's play through what we want to play through. So that's our zoom in, it's going really fast. But if we want to add that blur again, just turn off the use composition shutter angle, turn the shutter angle to 360. And so it adds that sort of blur. We can also, to make the movement of everything look a little bit more natural, and actually let's make sure that this keyframe, the 300 one, is at the very end of this adjustment layer. See how it's a little bit unnatural? It, the speed of it is a little slow. We can select both of these keyframes, right click, choose Bezier. That's gonna help. It's gonna create more of a speed ramp in between. So it sort of ramps into this speed. And if we go down and turn down this arrow here, we can actually see the velocity of this effect. See how at the beginning it's 239.8 per second. I think that's, I don't know, pixels or something. And then at the end, it's zero. Actually, at the start, it should, yeah, no, that's fine. At the beginning, it's about 240, I think that's pixels per second, or what scale per second, whatever it is. And then at the end, it's back down to zero, but in the middle, it's all the way up to 600 almost. So if I extend the edge of this adjustment layer, I can kind of see my keyframes a little bit better. And then I can go in here, and I can actually take these this point in, and I'm trying to get that peak in the middle right where the timeline indicator is, which is on the cut itself, because I want the speed to be the max there, and I want it to more do a ramp into it. So let's bring our adjustment layers back. And if we play a little bit more so you're not getting a seizure, there you have this sort of zoom blur effect. Now I will say that it works better when the edges of the film, when you mirror them, it looks a little bit cleaner. It's also going to look better if you're cutting from one clip to the next that looks more similar in terms of lighting and color. So say I take this clip here, put it here, instead of that driving shot, See how that looks just a little bit more natural? And that's probably what it's going to look like in your videos when you're cutting between shots that are a bit more similar. And so now if I want to apply this to another shot, I can just simply select both of them, right option, and then click and drag. That would be all on a PC. And so now if I go and play through this one, we automatically have that zoom blur transition here on this next clip. So it's pretty easy. You just have to line up the start of this adjustment layer in track two with the start of the clip. And so it's an easy way to apply this sort of zoom blur transition automatically to any sort of cut. Well, I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial. And if you did, please like and subscribe to the channel for more. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them below in the comments. And if you're looking to take your skills to the next level, make sure you head over to videoschoolonline.com where we have premium courses, more free tutorials and articles, guides, and all kinds of stuff that will help you become a better creator. Thanks so much for watching and have a beautiful day.